to us about the decision to to turn pro. Yeah, it's been a long time uh, waiting for my pro debut, so uh, this is the right time. Uh, I, I was trying to to get in like like right away after that fight in 2020, but uh, it didn't happen. Like with all the that that COVID restriction and all this stuff, so uh, so now it's the perfect moment. That's it. I, I'm I'm competing since I'm six years old in any martial art, so. It's it, it just natural for me. I'm gonna get a face to face with an opponent. Try, 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 try to see who, who who's the best mixed martial artist, and uh, that's it. This is nothing new for me. Yeah. So basically, like I never left martial arts since I'm six years old. So what, what what I did, six years old to eighteen, I, I did judo, and eighteen to now twenty seven, I did um, MMA. So basically, it's like. I've been two decades competing against opponents, so I already know the drills. Nothing new. Alex, uh, first off, tell us a little bit about your uh, your fighting style for uh, as you're making your pro MMA debut. I'm mainly a striker, but I'm not afraid to go to the ground either. I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu as well, so I have that going for me. Do you feel any extra pressure with this being your pro MMA debut than your amateur days? Once you go pro, this it's like a must win situation, right? So there's a little bit of pressure, but I'm just taking it all in. So what does it mean for you to train uh, with Jeff Jocelyn, who's like one of the Canadian MMA pioneers? It's an honor. Like he's he knows he's very wise. He's very patient. He like he's great. He's actually like he's probably one of the best teachers I could ever ask for. What's the biggest thing he's he's taught you heading into this your pro MMA debut? Honestly, just to believe in myself and just let it all go. Kareem, I know like he's gonna bring it. He's a dog. He's gonna I think he's he's a judo guy, but he's definitely I think he's more on the grappling side. But I'm very well like I'm prepared for him. It's gonna be a did, war. Did- Right now, I'm uh, more uh, at um, TriStar West Island and TrackFit for uh, that camp. So I'm working with uh, Xavier Alawi. I'm working with uh, Coach Nej. And uh, I'm, wor- I wo- I'm working with uh, boxing with my bro, uh, Lance Lundy. Well, talk to us about training with uh, Xavier uh, Alawi. I know he's obviously... Uh, been you know a, a sensational fighter himself and just fought back at the beginning of the month of July and picked up that UAE Warriors Bantamweight title what's it like training with someone that's you know had some success in the pro side of MMA yeah uh, t- training with Xavier it's amazing he I, he's like big mo- motivation for me uh, he he's like what what a, he's my toughest run at a TriStar Gym. He, he he since 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 the beginning he's a he's a really good uh, mentor. And um, he, uh, I, I talked to him, and now he helping me for that fight. Did you get to work with Henry Hooft at, at all uh, it, during that time up there at Sanford? Yeah, of course. He he, he was doing the he he was uh, giving the striking class and uh, sparring. He 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 gave me a lot of adv- advice. But if I, I can told you the person who gave me the the better advice up there, it was um, uh, Robbie Lauder. Sorry. Robbie Lauder, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Robbie Water was there. He he like he he was watching some of my sparring. He was g- giving me really good tips, and uh, that that I'm I'm still using to this day. He correct some little little details that I'm still using, and uh, it's still uh, I can see now the difference in, in my sparring session with with, with those uh, little tips he he gave me. My path to victory is honestly just be patient. These rounds are five minutes. Just take my time. Do not rush anything. If it goes to the ground, it goes to the ground. What's your path to victory? Five. <laughs> Five. That's it. <laughs> Fair enough. Short, simple, and sweet. I like that, Kareem. I know Kareem is good on the ground. I believe I might slightly be better. I know I'm definitely a better striker than he is. Well, just take my time. back protect yourself at all times follow my instructions at all times if you want to touch gloves do so now make your way back to your point ladies and gentlemen this btc bantamweight co-main event 
will be decided in three rounds or less. So here we go. We are just about ready for our co-main event. Matthew Rocca the third and final man inside the BTC cage. And here we go. And Kareem Ooh, comes out with wow. a huge teeth kick. Ooh, oh my Ooh. goodness. Kareem Henyon. He looked like he was shot out of a shot cannon. Shot out of a cannon. Heavy elbows. That was one of the most vicious teeth kicks I've seen. Oh, oh my the goodness. Elbows. But watch Gluzman. out for the arm bar Gluzman. from Gluzman. He's past the arm Heavy here. hammer fist from Kareem Henyon. Kareem Henyon came out with a front push kick from hell and threw Gluzman across the cage. I don't think Gluzman was expecting that at all. I haven't seen a teep kick like that since the SEG NHB days of, of the UFC from, from the that likes of Patrick incredible. Smith. And he, he clocked him too as, as Gluzman was coming up. He hit him with a nice shot and dropped him, hurt him. Credit to Gluzman for surviving this, going for that submission attempt. But now we have ourselves here. I don't think anyone was expecting that. <laughs> you know, me at the booth, but I, you know, especially Gluzman. Yeah, judging by the way he ran out here, judging by the way he's bouncing around and they're calling his name, you could tell this guy wanted to start this fight with a bang. Oh, nice. big takedown Matt. there from Henyon. It's Matt return. Gluzman's going to look to roll. Henyon's following him, doing a good job. Keeping that hip ride going. And now as well, you like to see the composure here from Henyon trying to advance his position as Gluzman has wrist control. This will definitely benefit Gluzman for the time being. He's taking some shots here, though. Some big ones. He's got to hold those edges. There he goes. Back to his feet. Now he's got to fight the hands. But this is what he needed. He needed to slow this fight down, right? Obviously, he needed to slow Kareem down. You know, this guy's moving 100 miles a minute. Oh, he, he lived up to that ultimate warrior type thing. That was <laughs> right, when you were a kid watching yeah. the warrior inside the squared circle. But my goodness. That was like Bobby Boucher, you know, the <laughs> flying drop kick. But here we got Kareem staying tight, keeping hip to hip. gluzman has got to fight the hands here. You know, he's not going to be able to do anything without fighting the hands here. And he's looking to try to grab that leg, maybe sit up for a switch, but he's not in the right position to do it. Oh, there was uh, Henyon trying the... A uh, trip that we saw yeah. from Virk in our previous bout. Yeah, he's disrupting the base, right? Attacking the upper body. People start forgetting about their legs and you start disrupting that base. Especially when Gluzman's sitting really heavy there. Now, Josh, if you're Gluzman, how much would that affect you? Because I don't think anyone saw that. And that was a heavy teep and a big right hand from Henyen. Definitely. It definitely woke him up <laughs> if he was sleeping for sure. Because, But like I said, now, you know, he's kind of slowed it down a bit here. They kind of get his wits about him. Kind of like reset. Like, okay, you know, that happened. And I'm still in this fight. Now we go to work. As Henyon gets the nice. fight to the ground. Nice job nice to transition down. into yeah. half guard. Yeah, he just sat back there. Nice takedown right into Guzman's full guard here. Now we'll see what Henyon can do on top. And we'll see what Guzman can do with that on his back in the full guard position. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the top control can be. It was a good job to get the fight back to the ground. And there you see Henyon trying to smother Guzman. Get those hands over the, the mouth and the nose of Guzman. I also wonder if that strategy too, Josh, was because of the weight and the tough cut that yep. Henyon had. You just wanted to try to get this one over quickly as possible. For sure, you, you know, you never know how you know badly that affected him. He might, you know, be he might know he only has cardio for a round maybe, and he wants to get it done as quickly as possible. Maybe not. Maybe you know he's he's capable and it feels fine, good to go three rounds. But he definitely started this fight with a bang. He started us off with one of the most memorable <laughs> moments in the history of BTC. Yeah. But now it's. You know, trying to advance and prove that position here. And we'll see the difference of a guy that hasn't fought since January of 2020 and a guy that's been in Gluzman who's been very active on yeah. the uh, amateur scene in, in the United States. Yeah. And in that sense, it'll benefit Gluzman. You know, he's been here often, very, very recently, and he said two years off. It's a long time, you know. People say the cage rust. Some people say, yes, there is. Some people say, no, it doesn't exist. But, you know, being out of the cage, you know, competitive live, an actual real fight, it, you know, uh, being active helps. Being, you know, being experienced and being in that cage very, very recently helps. Especially with the shape, because you can train all you want, but yeah. it's it's totally different when you step inside the cage. Yeah. Correct, Josh? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, there's nothing quite like the real thing. You can spar, you know, as calculated as possible, and some people go crazy hard. Um, but you know, there's there is nothing like you know those four ounce gloves in the cage against somebody that's you know trying to take a head off. As Henyon tries to advance position here, as Give credit to Gluzman, he's kind of yeah. trapped the arms oh, in there. Nice. Henyon posture ups, trying to land some ground and pound. 
I was just about to say Guzman's doing a good job of controlling Henyon from the bottom, not letting him get much damage going. But he's got to create some space. He's got to look for submission, submission attempts, look for some sweeps. Because uh, just being stuck on your back there without being able to do much, you know, you're not taking much damage, but you're losing the round. Oh, you heard the 10-second clapper, and there is the horn to end round number one. A very memorable opening round and opening 10 seconds here of round one. Kareem Henyon, you see the confidence he has as he steps up and goes to his corner after the opening round. I mean, for, I like sitting down. Give me that give me that damn stool. I want to sit down <laughs> and have a break. But some guys like standing up. They feel, you know, they want to sit down. It kind of, you know, fills up that blood in their legs and it kind of makes them heavy. So I understand coming from both perspectives. Well, Kareem Henyon trying to hype up this crowd here at the Burlington Training Center. I think he's made some fans after that opening round. Oh yeah, he's definitely a fun guy to watch already, you know, his debut fight here. And here we go, round two is underway. A more composed Kareem Henyon comes out to start round two. Both guys in the southpaw stance too, it's not, not often you see that. Ooh, nice jabs there, exchange. It was a good jab there from Henyon, but Gluzman was able to fire back nicely. The kick, but I think Gluzman did enough to block that. Oh, nice good jab again by Gluzman. Yeah. As well, Gluzman, you know, you know, training at Jocelyn's and Hamilton, not that far from Burlington. He's this is definitely a home field advantage for Gluzman. Absolutely. You can, you can see the the boxing too of, of Gluzman. You know, very. Oh, ooh, nice jab again. That jab's landing very good. He's got to find a home for that. You know, Jocelyn, you know, was very, very well rounded. Oh, nice what takedown. What a trip from Henyen. He is so such a quick, explosive athlete. Very much so. Yeah, that was beautiful. Step around, takedown as he pushed him through. Outside trip. Again, right back to this position here. Bluesman on his back. And the thing here with these guys debuting and just how inactive Kareem's been because he hasn't fought since in two years, like there's no real tape to study. You can't yeah. really prepare and that's got to be, I don't know if Gluzman's a guy that likes to look at tape, but if, you know, for your coach's standpoint to put up a game plan, there's really nothing. Yeah, you're going to go in blind. You don't know what to expect. You don't know if this guy's, you know, you might have a hint that he's more of a wrestler, more of a grappler, more of a striker, whatnot, but yeah, you don't, you don't have a lot of tape to study these guys and really see what they're all about. As Gluz, or excuse me, Henyen is back in the position where he closed out round number one, working there in half guard. Postures up and tries to play, land some good ground and pound. This is where gluzman has got to create some space from the bottom. He's got to get his feet on his hips of Henyen and start to push away, create a scramble, create some space to try to get back to his feet. He's having success on the feet there. He's landing some nice jabs. He's finding a home for it. But very, very nice takedown. Beautiful takedown, actually, by Henyen. And uh, he's right back in this top position and, and controlling here. And that seems to be working very nicely for Henyon. If he can survive what Gluzman's able to do and just find unique ways to get this fight to the ground. And I think that's the interesting thing. It's not your basic, you know, shoot him for the double leg or get a single leg. It's you know, insane back heel trips or, you know, a teep from the running position and a right hand that got the fight to the ground in the first round. Everything's very athletic and very explosive. And it's well unique, too. Like, it's so hard to prepare for a guy where you don't know where he's going to strike from or when he's going to strike. Yeah, 100%. Good elbow to the back of the leg there from Henyon to Gluzman. And now he's going to try to grind that elbow in and put up Gluzman up against the fence. Yeah. Gluzman's getting close to that cage. He doesn't want to get his head stuck in the cage here. He's going to get close to it. He needs to sit up to his butt and try to wall walk and start using the cage to your advantage. But here, right there, see how Henyon pushed him, his head to the, to the wall, he can kind of stuff his head there, and it's not a fun spot to be in. You know, not at all, especially when Henyon will posture up and land those two quick ground and pound attempts. And you saw Gluzman there try to push off the fence to get that separation, create that space you were talking about, Josh. He, he's doing that, he's doing other things, but he's holding Henyon close to him while he does it. So he's gonna keep him tight to him. Like, I might be trying to set up an armbar like he tried in the first round, but he needs to do something here to create a scramble, to create some chaos, create some space, because right now the clock is his enemy here, and he's Henyon staying on top, staying heavy, staying positionally sound, and just kind of chipping away. As well, Matthew Rocca, you know, he doesn't look like he's interested in standing this up. He's just continuing to, you know, make sure Henyon keeps working. He doesn't, it hasn't, hasn't given him a reason to try to stand it up, which we saw in the previous Verk uh, crossball battle, where that fight did get st stood up twice in the third round. Right. 
as Guzman does block. Looked like that elbow attempt and nearly, so I thought Guzman was going to try to posture up there for an arm bar. Yep. Guzman's got to go for something here. You know, just, again, you're letting the, the rounds chip away, and you're going to be down two rounds now. Um, which is what final 42 seconds happen. So try to make something happen here in this final last, you know, 35 seconds. Try to create some an opportunity and try to finish the round. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, there we go. And there we go. Up. We're going to get a stand up as Henyon isn't being active enough on top. And that has to be music to the ears of yeah. Bluesman. This plays into Bluesman for sure. Let's we'll see if we can make something here in the last 15 seconds. We've got to try to capitalize here. Guzman had success using his jabs in that boxing. It's Guzman that tried to shoot it for a takedown. And there he is. Good job. Nice right hook from Henyen. Good combo, but the horn goes to end round two and what looks like another very successful round for Kareem Henyen. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Very good round. You know, that was a very crafty takedown with that crossbody push and that outside trip. Kind of depends on the situation, but it's a very tough call. What do you think of that stand-up? Um, you know, I wasn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. You know, I'll take that as you agreed with it. <laughs> so, without saying that, but here we go. Third and final round here in this bantamweight bout between Kareem Henyan and Alex Guzman. Now, obviously, Guzman's corner is going to tell me, you know, down two rounds, you got to win this fight here. You know, this round has to be like. Super, super dominant, or you have to finish the finish the fight. So we'll see. He's going to be a little bit apprehensive. though. he's got taken down off of it. He doesn't want to, you know, you know overcommit on his punches. Where Henny knows he's up two rounds and kind of pick his shots a little bit, you know, safer. This low kick there from Guzman. Guzman now. This is where he's got to, you know, showcase the success he had in round two with that striking. Let that carry over. Yeah. As Henyon looks very tired, hands down, trying to back away, and there's oh, that. Try it again. Yeah, try that jumping trip. You can hear Bluesman's quarter saying, you have to go, you have to move. Yep, and, and agreed. You don't want to go and just, you know, blind and eat a big shot, but you got to put yourself at some risk. You know, you're down. He's going for a double leg here. And there is... Guzman trying to get this fight to the ground and see what he can do. Good knee to the body from Guzman. Guzman was in on the entry there. He just didn't commit to the fourth shot. Oh, nice strike off the, yeah. off the break there. Good, good elbow there from Henyen. Henyen with a kick to the body. Very interesting three and a half minutes to go here in round three. If Guzman can implement that striking or if Henyen can find a way to push because right now it looks like his gas tank is very close to being on E. Well, you know, that also comes to that weight cut, yeah. right? We talked about, like, you know, he is a very big bantamweight, you know, tall, doesn't look very, you know, skinny for, for being how tall he is. Has a really long reach. Well, Kareem's trying to look. Don't, if, if you're in his corner, I don't think you'd like his hands being down that low. No, no. <laughs> I, I mean, some guys, that's their kind of the way they fight. I don't, I like, you know, always hands up, be safe. Oh, nice, oh. nice exchange there, both guys. Yeah. Crazy exchange and a good right hook out of it from Henyen. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Henyen's right hook versus Guzman's jab are the two of their better shots. <laughs> both kind of telling each other, having fun. That they are, you can definitely tell that this is a fun experience for both Henyen and Guzman. And this is now the, as they enter in the journey of being a professional mixed martial artist. So the, the, the onus is on Guzman now. He, yeah. You know, he's down two rounds. Like his corner is screaming at him, you got to put forward. Henry can do this for the rest of the fight, you know. And, and you know, even if he loses this round, you know, he's going to be going on the judge's scorecard. So he can be a little bit safer. He has the... Oh, oh, oh. in that double again. It's almost like he heard you there, just shot in there and tries, trying to get something going as being in that gray area in open space, that's not going to win you around. round. Guzman needs to pull him off the cage here and then reshoot and grab that far, that left leg of Henyon to be able to pull him off. But again, the clock is losing his biggest enemy at this point. You got to make something happen. He's trying. Good balance though from Henyon, able yep. to stay up one foot and then get the break. Get back to the standing position and where Kareem Henyon likes it. He can 
can enjoy this, and you hear the, the warning there from Matthew Ron Rocca about the action. Can't just have two guys staring at each other. Nice, low kick. nice return. Good kick to the body from Gluzman. Gluzman has been very, very just right hand dominant. He wants throwing jabs, throwing right hooks. I like to see him open up a little bit more, throw that left hand. And especially with Henyon's right hand being so low in that southpaw stance. With an overhand left, left hook. Well, the chance of Alex here trying to will on Gluzman to try to get him to do something here in the final 60 seconds. Is that going to push Gluzman on here? Oh, good jab there good from Henyon. Low kick from Guzman. Yep, good low kicks there. Again, but, but you're not going to win the fight here no, at this point with just no, little low kicks. No, 100%. Those are, you know, for money that bank up you know, earlier on to build up. But now you got to go for broke. You got to get a knockout or a submission. You got 30 seconds left. He's got to kind of he'll marry it here. You go for broke. Got to take, take a page of that Kareem Henyan book here. But yep. nice waist lock from Guzman. Can he find a way to get the fight to the ground? Good short knees to the back of the leg of Henyen. Guzman needs to push off and strike here. Push off and strike, go for something, try and get a knock. There it is. And there you go. Nice flurry. And there's a flying knee attempt followed by a right hook from Gluz, uh, from Henyen. And that's going to do it for this fight. A wildly entertaining bantamweight bout. Great, great fight. You know, great first two rounds for Henyen. And, and a very good push from Guzman at the end. You know he's down, he's pushing, he's trying to get that that W and he was doing all he could. Very good fight though. It'll be interesting to see how the judges score it. I think Henyan should come away with the decision, but that third round, very interesting uh, how the judges could score that one. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. I, you know, you could give Guzman the, thir the third round for sure. He was pushing the action more, you know, had better better strikes landed, I feel. But yeah, I think if I had to, you know, be the judge in this one, it's uh, two to one. BTC Fight fans, please put a big round of applause together for both of the fighters in this cage. After three rounds of mixed martial arts, the judges' scorecards read as follows. Judge Woods scores the contest 29 to 28. Judge Hanif scores it 29 to 27. And Judge McNeil scores it 29 to 28. All for your winner by unanimous decision. Kareem, the Kryptonian, Henyan. Very impressive. Kareem Henyan wins a unanimous decision. One judge scored it 29-27. Means Henyan got a 10-8 round. But Henyan will now speak with the gentleman of mixed martial arts, the gentleman Josh Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the winner, Kareem Henyan. Kareem, that was, first of all, let's talk about the start of that fight. You came out like a bat out of hell, out of a cannon. Is that how you want to start every single fight? I know I said you ran down here to the cage to get going, and you ran with a, a flying teep kick. Is that what you want to start with? Not at all. It was just like in the moment. I'm, uh, honestly, I, I, I usually have more street fight than cage fight. So uh, I, I'm, coming to, I'm coming to start hard. That's it. Uh, I'm not going to like to let him impose his will. I will impose my will since the beginning, and after we will work. He was able to withstand and survive the early onslaught. Uh, were you surprised at all that he was still in there after that? Not at all. I know he's a tough fighter. He's never been finished in his whole uh, uh, fighting career. He have like, between like all his uh, boxing, MMA, uh, kickboxing, he never have been finished. So I know he, he will be really tough to finish, but I, I did what I got to do. You came in yesterday, you had some difficulty with the scale. You, you missed weight. Uh, is it, was that just a, you know, a technicality thing or is it, are you going to stay at Bantamweight or are you going to go to Featherweight? I, I didn't compete for three years. So because of the pandemic, because of, the, of an injury. So I, I, I didn't like cut, cut weight for more than three years. So I, I, I thought it would be like an amateur, like we'll just have to like start cutting the week, uh, the week before. But uh, I, I, I just started like too late, the, the, the cutting. So uh, next time I, I, I will like take her more seriously, especially now I'm in the pro league. Speaking of that, you're now 1-0 as a pro. How quickly do you want to get back in the cage? Anybody in particular you want to fight next? Honestly, I'm coming here for all the bells. So anyone who can get me to that belt, I'm going to fight him. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Kareem Henyan.